Hi everybody and welcome to Cavaliers Corner. I'm Mick Morano and graciously Maria Marcusano, head coach of the Lady Cavaliers, agreed to talk with me and it's always an enjoyable to talk to you Maria. You're very enthusiastic about the job and that and you've just done terrific since you've come here. Uh, let's recap the season up to this point. You're having another great season. I know there are a couple of games that I did see some steam coming out of your ears. You weren't too happy. A couple. Uh, with, yeah, a couple. But uh, overall, the team's played pretty well. Yeah, you know, we uh, finished the year strong last year, and we kind of wanted to improve upon that. But it's been a crazy year in the GLIAC, um, as is every year. But this year especially, I feel like on any given night, you've seen that any team – can beat any team. And I think every every Thursday, every Saturday, everybody looks at the at the matchups and you think, well, this team's probably going to win and this team's probably going to win. And every single night we've had games where, you know, teams have surprised teams and beat them. And uh, it's been the same with us. You know, games that we might have thought were going to be our hardest games of the season, we've played well, we've won those games. And then games where, you know, we just didn't show up or didn't play our best, you know, teams have snuck up on us and stole some wins. Um, so, yeah, definitely, I mean, you can't complain with the position we're in in the conference. We've had a decent season. We definitely feel like we left or have left a few games slip, slip away from us. But um, we're going to continue to to work and, and hopefully get hot here at the right time towards the end of the year. As you look at the team up to this point, is there an area that you feel that has improved or that you feel good about as you head down the stretch and then into the playoffs? And then is there an area that – is a little bit of a concern as you uh, wind down the see the regular season. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we've improved tremendously on the defensive end this year, um, especially in our man. Um, you know, defense is a lot about effort, but it's also about communication and rotations. And in those two areas specifically, we've gotten a lot better. Um, you know, last night was a perfect example that it became a def defensive game, and we won. You know, in the past, we might not have won those defensive battles. Um, and definitely, you know, my teams have always been known for offense, and this year we've struggled mightily on the offensive end. Um, I was just talking to one of the players about, you know, the box scores that you look in, look at game in and game out from our, our games, but also from our other teams. And, you know, teams consistently shoot in the 40s and 50% and sometimes still lose. And, and we're consistently shooting in the 30s, and, you know, sometimes we're grinding out wins with that, sometimes we're losing. And if we could just get that up to average, you know, get it into the 40s, a game here or there, we'd probably have a few more wins on our schedule, but we've consistently struggled with our shooting this year. We've talked about that, Joe and I, uh, about the, the problems of that, and that's really been kind of the weakest area of the team uh, up to this point in the season, and, of course, they can get hot. But you probably are the type, especially since you were a, a good offensive player for Butler, Division I basketball in Indiana, that you really don't uh, stop the girls from, from shooting. You still want them, even though that they're not shooting well, you still want them to look for their shot. Yeah, absolutely. I don't ever want them to second guess um, you know, when they're open. I want them to have the confidence to, to give it a go. Now, if you're 0 for 3 or 0 for 4 at the start of the game, then maybe you need to look to get a teammate involved at that point. But the girls know they have the green light. And I, I, want, I don't want that to change because if you, if you don't have the green light, then you start second-guessing every move you make. You start, start second-guessing wide-open looks. And if we're wide open, how can we not take that shot? You know, any Division II player should be able to knock down a wide-open shot. And that's really been our problem this year. It's not contested looks. It's been bunnies. It's been layups. Um, you know, one of the games that sticks out is up at Michigan Tech, one of the best teams in the league, one of the hardest places to play. I think we, we missed 26 layups that day. Wow. And we ended up losing by four, five, six points. It was a close game. We actually controlled that game, even missing all those layups the entire time and lost it at the very end. Um, so it's just one of those things where you got to continue to to get shots up and get reps up and talk about it, but you don't want to take away the green light because then their confidence, you know, is going to shoot way too low. And and coming down the stretch here and these tight games that we're going to have and important games we're going to have, they got to they got to be able to play freely on the offensive end. And you know, all we can do is keep working and hopefully it comes around. If not, we'll keep grinding on the defensive end and try and steal some wins. You mentioned about that uh, uh because of the shooting you've struggled in some teams that maybe you should have beaten in la uh, easier. Uh last night was a perfect example. Malone happens to be struggling uh, mightily this season, and they came in here, and you had to be sweating with that as you entered the fourth quarter because the girls just had not played very well. As we look at that ball game, uh, it just seemed like 
They couldn't put it together, but they did come back out in the fourth quarter, and they played exceptionally well and scored 21 points, and that wound up being the big difference. Yeah, Malone made us play um, a game that we're not comfortable with yesterday. I mean, they slowed it down, set it up every single time, and you know we tried to get out in transition and pick up the pace of the game, but because our shots weren't falling, we got hesitant with that. And so it became a defensive battle, and it became a, a half-court game, which, again, is not our strength. We don't have that dominant post player that we can pound it into, or you know, with our shooting percentages, we really don't have enough shooters um, shooting a high enough percentage to set up a set every single time. So it, it did become an uncomfortable situation for us because um, it was a type of game and a type of pace that we don't like to play. Um, but like you said, the fourth quarter, Kelsey had gone, you know, 0 for 7 on the game. Yeah. She came through and hit a couple back to back, and that's really what kind of extended the lead finally for us. You know, it was right there, and you know, senior, she kept her confidence high, and she usually does. Whether she's on or off, she'll continue to shoot it, and she did. She had two big shots back to back, got an and one, and um, really put mm -hmm. us over the hump there. That's exactly right, and not only her, but the other girls as well. It seems that there are a couple girls you go to uh, offensively, but if they're struggling, they really pick it up on other ends. Like Kelsey played very well on the defensive end. She got a couple of steals. She hit the board. She had a good rebounding night. So that must be something that you stress in practice as well, to have the girls really pick it up in other areas that they're not excelling in their best area. Well, yeah, I tell you what, hitting shots <laughs> gives us energy in all areas. So if we're hitting shots, we play even harder on the defensive end. But yesterday was one of those games where even though we weren't hitting shots, we continued to play hard on the defensive end. Uh, Kelsey had a good game defensively, but Jalen had a huge game defensively. You know, Brittany ended up with eight boards. Brooklyn came in with huge blocks um, that gave us confidence in other areas. You know, when a kid gets a block like that, it picks the whole team up. It's almost like somebody hitting a three. Um, so we did have, you know, those big rebounds, those big steals that kind of gave us burst of energy that we needed for our confidence because those shots weren't falling to give us that, that confidence. As we look at the remainder of the season, the schedule, it's going to be tough, but you're in a pretty good position right now. And if you can get a couple of wins, you guys are going to be in, in good shape coming into the playoffs. Yeah, definitely. We've been talking a lot about wanting to host that first round of the playoffs. And right now we're, I think, in fifth or sixth position, you know, overall third in the South. Right. Um, and the top four overall get to host that first game. And, you know, we're only one game away from those teams that are all clumped up in second place. Um, we're only one game away from all those teams. And um, we know that a couple of those teams have to beat up on each other in this last right. part of the season. And in the same with us, we still have to face Ashland, we still have to face Ohio Dominican, we still have to face Wayne State again. Um, but we know that if we take care of business, the, the opportunity to host that first round um, playoff game would be great. Um, obviously, making the playoffs in general is a huge accomplishment in this league because they only take eight out of 16 teams. So making it's cool, but we definitely want to try and work for that goal of hosting the first game. Well, we've got Ashland on, on Thursday, and that's uh, one that you want to get back at them. You showed at least for much of the first quarter, that you could dominate them. And then you closed the game in the fourth quarter, uh, playing well as, as well in that ball game. But it was just like the second and third. I bet you you thought to yourself, who are those girls that are out there playing against Ashland? Of course, they obviously with them undefeated. But you, uh, they're a tremendous team. But you got to feel that your girls could play with them. Yeah, absolutely. We feel like we can play with anybody on any given night if we show up you know, we give effort, and when you're playing a really good team, unfortunately, you got to hit shots too. And that's what happened at Ashland. I think we started out hot, hit our first uh, four or five shots, we hit our first two threes, and then we didn't hit another one the rest of the game, I don't believe. I think we finished two of 24 from three, and it's going to be hard beating anybody shooting that percentage, let alone Ashland. Um, they're a great team, and, and top to bottom, those kids play hard for 40 minutes, so. Even if they are down, you know they're going to continue to bust their butt and try and get back in the game, and that's what they did. They took over in the second quarter and, you know, had us at a pretty li big lead at the half all from that right. second quarter effort. Right. You know, as you look at yourself in coaching, uh, here you, you've got the X's and O's and the presses and the style that you want to play, and then you have 12, 13, 14 personalities it's a, a, a struggle sometimes to blend that all together, but you've been able to do that. It seems like the girls just love playing for you, and they respect you, and that says a lot about your coaching ability. Well, I appreciate that. Um, 
definitely when you're dealing with females in general, the personalities can get um, interesting to stay, to say the least, but we've got a great, great group of kids here. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, some of them are really close off, on, off the court. Some of them aren't, but the biggest thing is they all want to win and they all want to be good teammates. So even if they don't particularly like somebody off the floor, they want to be a good teammate to them, they're going to respect them, they're going to do whatever they can for them, and that goes a long way. Um, you know, I think I told somebody else this season, our chemistry is almost too good this year because they're too nice to each other at practice. They don't go as hard. They don't want to make their, you know, their buddy look bad or they don't want to hurt them on a foul or they don't want to block their shot. So in, in some ways I think that's hurt us this year because we, our practice has have been a lot less competitive this year. Um, but yeah, overall, we just got such a good group of kids who are, um, you know, just want to be good people, good teammates, mm -hmm. and we talk about that a lot. So yeah, we're definitely blessed here. Well, continued success, and we're going to be following you right on through the end. And uh, it's enjoyable to to watch you uh, mold the girls into a, a, a great unit. And uh, let's keep our fingers crossed, and we'll close out the season good and see you in the playoffs. Hey, appreciate it. <laughs> Hopefully, we can get get hot here and keep it rolling. Right. This has been Mick Morano with Maria Marcasano, head coach of the Walsh University Lady Cavaliers on Cavaliers Corner.